Okay, uh, so thanks for having me here. Uh, so I'll just uh, try to tell a quick story about some work we've done recently on, uh, you know, coming from from a government lab that has lots of uh, problems and very little money, and so uh, we had to figure out ways to to try to genotype uh, plants for several projects we had uh, to deliver. And so, uh, so basically the title says this, we developed this uh, chip that somehow accommodates five different species. And I'll just try to tell you why we're doing this and where we're going to uh, with this kind of approach and what kind of problems we're trying to solve. Okay, uh, so I think it's very clear to everyone that uh, we need affordable SNP data, not for a few crops, but for hundreds of crops and trees. And this is really the, the big uh, challenge for us. And of course, when you're dealing with a single species, uh, just maize or just rice, but when you are in a lab that uh, receives uh, demand from several germ plants banks and several breeding programs, you have to somehow figure ways to, to to, to solve everybody's problem. And so, and of course, uh, uh, this has to do with the fact that breeding depends on, on the identification of new sources, genetic variation. If you're dealing with, with species that have very little breeding history and, and domestication, you have to figure ways to quickly move into uh, the banks or the natural populations and, 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 you know, and generate data. And of course, uh, SNP data has to be uh, low cost, has to be very robust, user friendly for breeders and for germ plant curators, and of course, uh, very affordable. So this is just uh, uh, some of the same ideas we discussed uh, a few years back uh, when we convened with Susan McCooch and a number of other folks uh, from several institutions in trying to figure ways to, to uh, genotype all the over 7 million accessions of all the germ plants banks that exist worldwide. And of course, uh, uh, GBS has been uh, one of the big themes in the last few years here at Plant Genome. And, and, and we tried this at the beginning using the protocols that, that were out there. And uh, in fact, we were not that happy for a number of reasons. We're trying to do this uh, with the methods that rely basically on restriction enzyme. Uh, you get very unequal uh, read coverage. And uh, we did some in-house GBS and we also contracted out. And at the end of the day, the kind of uh, uh, repeatability at the two levels. Basically, if you do sample the same SNP over and over or not, and once you sample the same SNPs, if you get the same genotypes. When you multiply those two uh, uh, metrics, at the end of the day, you end up with actually a lot of missing data and not necessarily the, the, the right genotypes. Uh, and, you know, we also uh, outsourced this to Cornell and some other places, and we, in fact, we were not that happy with the numbers at the end of the day, especially as you accumulate more and more samples and you're trying to genotype several tens of thousands of markers. Of course, you can impute in some species, but when you're dealing with highly heterozygous genomes of trees, impu imputation is very difficult because you do not have your reference haplotypes to do this. You're dealing with species that have one SNP every 30 base pairs, and so the challenges are, are different. And in fact, this also has been shown in maize with, uh, in a few papers, and I'm sure that a lot of people uh, run into this kind of problems. So uh, this has been also somehow described on what, why this is happening, uh, and this particular review shows some of the events that happen that you get a, a relatively large amount of missing data on this uh, restriction-based uh, GBS methods. So some final consideration for us, at least, uh, uh, in the last few years is that, you know, if, if you have to run a study that you do not have to go back to the markers, why I call them like never to be repeated studies, okay? Just like, you know, you build a linkage map, you publish it, and that's it, or you just, uh, you know, generate a diversity study, you never go back to those markers, fine. But if you need to accumulate uh, SNP data for many samples, uh, run genomic predictions, and uh, rely on those same markers five, 10 years from now, you have to have a very robust 
uh, high quality, uh, very, uh, you know, very little missing data or no missing data uh, to be able to do this. Of course, uh, methods of uh, better sequencing-based methods are, are always uh, coming in, and I'm sure that uh, maybe in the future there will be something uh, going on. However, chips have become uh, more and more affordable, and this is really a, a nice, in, uh, interesting thing to see in the future what's going to happen uh, sequencing versus uh, fixed chip content. So for the eucalyptus, uh, we were involved in sequencing the genome, and this is the main species I've been working with for the last few years. And uh, so we developed a 60K chip uh, about three years ago, and the way we did this, uh, of course, we had to accommodate several different species in the same chip, but eucalyptus species that are planted and bred are relatively close, so we managed to do this in a way that, uh, that we actually resequenced 240 different trees out of 12 species, and we uh, managed to select and distribute the SNPs across the genome in a way that we would get uh, enough data, uh, about 30 to 35,000 uh, polymorphic uh, markers per each one of those species. And we did this together with the Brazilian companies, uh, that uh, uh, breed eucalyptus for mainly for cellulose and energy. And this is just uh, showing the distribution of those, uh, of those SNPs. Uh, now, of course, not everything is eucalypt, not everything has a large industry behind. And uh, the, the question is how many SNPs do we really need for breeding and germplant studies? And for most applications, we really don't need that many markers. Uh, maybe you know a couple of thousand markers we will do for most uh, uh, questions that are posed for these genomic orphan crops, and uh, you know most application breeding and germplant characterization have to do with uh, genetic structure analysis, pedigree reconstruction, microassisted integration, and genomic prediction. And depending on the extent of uh, linkage equilibrium in your population, with with a few thousand markers, you can probably do very well. Uh, of course. The big issue is that SNP data has to be fast, cheap, very robust, and user-friendly, okay? And so when you deal with several uh, breeders around uh, the country, uh, you have to have ways to deliver the data in ways that it will be easy to open the files and use the data. And in fact, we realize that we don't need hundreds of thousands of markers uh, for a few species, but we really need a few thousand markers for several hundreds of species. And so this is uh, where we're, you know, we came from. For example, at Embrapa, which would be the equivalent of the USDA ARS, uh, the uh, governmental organization, we have over 150,000 accessions and, and out of 140 germplasm banks, uh, 700 species, and uh, you know, large collection for some of the main species, but we also have several hundred uh, banks for not so well-known species, in fact. And big thing here would be to be able to actually genotype all of them and actually organize these collections, uh, develop uh, uh, all kinds of different studies on you know, the richness of these collections, and so on, or for example, developing, and this is really important to develop core collections for uh, investing in phenotyping in a much more efficient way. Or just an example here, uh, projects that are going on in the world, this particular case in Mexico, uh, where you then use the information to derive new populations uh, for breeding. So uh, for this particular uh, axiom array that we developed, uh, we had uh, different projects, uh, not a lot of money. And so what we did, we basically uh, did the SNP discovery for coffee, for cashew, for cassava, Brazilian pine, and eucalypts as a control, because we had SNPs from that uh, previous chip. And, uh, you know, we just uh, distributed the 50,000 SNPs across these five species in amounts of SNPs depending on how much money each project had, okay? So we had uh, about 25,000 SNPs for coffee, about 16,000 for cashew, 4,000 for cassava, uh, 3,000 for Brazilian pine, and 2,000 for eucalypts as a control. 
And of course, uh, uh, this Axiom technology is very robust. It provides uh, uh, different quality level data. Uh, and you know, this is uh, most of the markers that we got, and I'll show this, were of uh, uh, very high quality. So these conversion statistics are here, and uh, so most of, uh, for most of the species, of course, remember these are all uh, new SNPs uh, that were not validated before. So basically we did the SNP discovery based on resequencing data that we did in our lab, or we, for example, in the case of cassava, we used JGI data. In the case of pine, we only had red sequencing because it's a 23 gigabase genome, and, and nobody has a reference genome for that. And uh, so the distribution of markers you can see in the first row there. Uh, and, you know, most, most of the, for most species, uh, excluding the pine, where we only had a conversion rate of about 70%, probably given to the very high complexity of, gen of the genome and the lack of a reference genome, we had uh, somewhere around uh, 90 over, 90% 90 over conversion rate and very high uh, quality data. And of course this, uh, you know, this uh, uh, chip data now it's being used in the case of cashew for example, which is actually a uh, uh, pretty or genomic orphan crop and we also just finished a reference genome for it. Uh, and Brapa has a, a pretty active breeding program. In fact, it's probably the only breeding program that I know in the world. Maybe in India there is also something going on, but in Brazil it's the only one. Uh, no large company will ever work with uh, cashew breeding, but it's, it's an important fruit crop in the northeast, almost uh, one million hectare of planted cashew. And not only the cashew nuts that everybody knows, but also the pseudo fruit is very much used for a number of uh, products. And so uh, this is just a, a few photographs of uh, cashew plantation. It's uh, planted by grafting and uh, it's a very important uh, crop for small farmers as well. Uh, lots of nice diseases to work on. We don't know anything about the inheritance of these diseases and we just finished genotyping about 3,000 samples of cashew using this chip. Uh, lots of segregating families, uh, uh, the entire germplasm bank, and with this data now, we're just going into uh, QTL mapping and genomic prediction for productivity trait as well. So really, uh, you know, having this tool, uh, you know, put the breeding program of cashew in a completely different level very quickly. At the same time, we use the data in, in the linkage maps we had for cashew to actually anchor the genome. And we also use some chromatin ligation technology to to uh, you know, in, in improve uh, and basically arrive to the to a chromosome scale scaffolding of uh, of the cashew chromosome. I'll just go over this quickly. In the case of uh, the Brazilian pine, it's more to do with natural population and conservation efforts, and the definition of, of uh, you know this is a pretty much endangered. Uh, this is the only conifer that that happened that occurs in Brazil, and by using the slip data we really uh, provided a much more, uh, uh, much more correct uh, information on the distribution of, uh, of diversity. For example, if you use microsatellite data uh, with 30 markers there, you really underestimate, uh, highly underestimate the differentiation among population. And when you put SNPs, uh, you know, you change completely the figure. And of course, this has a large impact on the way that you're going to manage this uh, remaining natural populations. In the case of cassava, uh, cassava snips with, you know, 3,000 snips, we really didn't need that much. But with 3,000 snips, we're now uh, running some journal prediction uh, experiments, uh, basically using the SNP data to reconstruct pedigrees with these genomic relationship matrices and just using this data for for predicting phenotypes. The way that cassava breeding is carried on is, is, is basically by uh, uncontrolled pollination, but by using the SNP data, you can reconstruct the pedigrees and, and uh, basically estimate all your uh, quantitative parameters and, and, and run your predictions. And just as, as Tom showed, you know, the big impact uh, of using genome prediction in our case of the perennial plants like eucalypts, cashew, and coffee is really increasing selection intensity and uh, reducing the time of a breeding generation. But of course, genotyping costs 
uh, and the denominator has to be also low. Uh, if not, uh, you know, this is not going to work. And so genomic selection, I won't spend too much time on that. I think a lot of you know more than me. But uh, basically the, the idea is very simple, is to use markers to capture all the effects that are impacting your uh, quantitative traits. And we really don't care about uh, necessarily knowing what these genes are, but we just put markers and use the markers as a surrogate of all the effects that the genome contributes to the trait. And so this, this is being used now uh, in eucalypts in Brazil. Uh, and we're beginning with cashew and also the plan is to use coffee. And we're pretty sure that perennials can benefit from the SNP data uh, much more than annual crops uh, for, for obvious reasons of the length of a breeding cycle. Uh, of course, uh, in the case of eucalypts, so basically we just have this, uh, the training populations and uh, you know, we validate uh, you know, we genotype and phenotype, we cross-validate the models. Once we have a model, we can just cross-generate progeny and, and, and carry out very early selection of individuals which are either taken to clonal trials or they induce flowering and we can run and, and, and cycle uh, recurrent selection generation. And by doing this, in the case of eucalypts, we're cutting down the, the time of uh, breeding cycle by half. So basically in the same time, in the same 15 years that we run uh, a breeding uh, generation by conventional breeding, we can run two generations of uh, genomic uh, base spray. So as a summary, uh, there is an urgent need to develop a high quality SNP platform for hundreds of plant species, not just for those five or six main ones. Uh, SNP discovery is very affordable by just resequencing accessions. We can also now build reference genomes at much, much better uh, and faster way using this new chromatin ligation technologies, uh, but SNP data has to be genome-wide, affordable, simple, fast, and mainly interchangeable across institutions. In, the, in this particular case, the fixed uh, chip content really has a big advantage compared to uh, just random GBS methods. Uh, applications are uh, enormous, okay, uh, all the way from germplasm characterization in banks, to genomic prediction and gene discovery, uh, if you want to do that. Uh, Multi-species arrays really allow that, and we're now uh, working on, on a multiple species array uh, in ways that would uh, really boost the possibility of uh, genotyping the 150,000 uh, accessions that we have at MBRAP. And, uh, Big effort now, uh, we're beginning with tropical fruit crops, which are pretty much genome orphan. Cashew, it's uh, already going. Passion fruit, uh, everybody knows, and also there's very little done. Mangaba, guayava, and some others, several interesting fruit that uh, have not received any attention by breeders. By using SNP data at this level, I'm sure that we can uh, bring them very quickly into not only domestication, but uh, real breeding. I'd like to uh, acknowledge funding by CNPq, which is the Brazilian National Research Council, Embrapa, and also the Federal District Research Foundation for the grants that uh, uh, you know, were given to us, and of course the service providers that have worked with us in developing some of these uh, methods. Thank you very much. I'll take questions.